Hi everyone, it's me, Krillius, Team Racing Productions MC and producer. And joining me today is our special guest, Xavier Logan. Hey Xavier, how are you? Hi, I'm good, how are you? I am doing really, really good. For our viewers, could you just talk a little bit about who you are? Okay, um, hi, my name is Xavier Logan. I'm an 18 year old black gay male dancer, artist, actor, model, content creator, social media personnel, activist, YouTuber, everything under the sun. But <laughs> yes. oh, I love it. <laughs> Multi talented, honey. In Spain, they call that Mocha Trees, model, actor. <laughs> That's why they model, singer, actress. All right, great, great. Great to have you here, Xavier. Uh, well, you're 18, quite young. Oh my God, I feel so old now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, and you are you are dabbling, you know, in all these different fields, artistic fields, fields of media. Um, have what is it? You know, what got you? You know, into dabbling into all these different fields. When I was very young it was something that my parents thought was important to have their child find something that they love to do and with that being said i was in soccer and basketball and tennis and football and baseball and She's also everything She's also athletic. <laughs> <laughs> before i started dancing and they were just trying to find out something, find something for me that I really, really enjoyed doing. So that's why I was hopping around between different sports at a very young age. But after karate, I learned how to do a split. And after learning how to do a split, it was kind of like over for me. I always used to love dancing around the house and now I can dance around the house and like pop in a split. So I want to say around the summertime of the early 2000s, or like mid to 2000, like 2010 ish. Um, oh, the they enrolled me the into a dance summer camp, and uh, from there, the rest is history. I've been dancing ever since. Ah, wonderful, wonderful. Um, and you, you also do YouTube. How did that get started for you? I started my YouTube channel about four years ago. I would say. Um, I love being in front of the camera ever since I was on um, this reality TV show called Dance Moms. And just being in front of the camera. Okay. Yes. <laughs> After being in front of the camera and just seeing how production and lights and everything works, um, it really influenced me to create my own platform and my own brand with putting what I want to put out there and encourage and inspire other kids so that's basically what started my youtube channel i started it around my freshman year and i would say over the course of the years it's changed dramatically like what i posted at first is definitely not what i'm posting now i think every few years every like two three years it goes through like I want to say a dramatic change where my content is like totally different than what it was two years ago. Well, talk to us a little bit um, about that content. What's the content that makes you most passionate now to produce on YouTube? It, it varies. Um, it started off, I want to say, with heavy dance content. I was posting me trying to be like these famous dancers. I talked about my dance mom's experience and that to this day is actually the most popular YouTube video on my YouTube channel. It has like half a million views. And after that era kind of like ended, it didn't really end, it's just that school kind of got a lot for me. So I couldn't be on my YouTube as much as I wanted to. And when I came back, I noticed that my content was more of vlogs, more of like me going to dance competitions and me vlogging me being at school because that's all I could do. I couldn't really sit down in front of a camera and like make a funny video or really create a script of content because I was so busy. So then it kind of shifted to like me at dance competitions and me vlogging about school or me giving advice to my friends when I could. And now 
I took another break because junior senior year was a lot. And now my content is more, I want to say, inspirational. I feel like I do a lot of, I still do my vlogs because when I have, that's basically what I have time for. But also I do a lot of advice content. Like I talk about my coming out story and um, I bring my like best friends on my YouTube channel to talk about like how they feel about have it, having a gay best friend. My mother's on my YouTube channel talking about how she feels having a gay son. But I also still do my competition vlogs. I also still do videos about just advice in general. So I would say at first it was heavy on the day of content. Then it got into more vlogs, but still dance content. And now it's like I have a combination of dance content, but also real life stories and advice. Amazing, amazing. Uh, so talk to me a little bit about that dance mom's experience. What was it like being in front of the camera at such a young age? I absolutely loved it. Um, I wasn't... <laughs> <laughs> I, that trip... I love the attention, darling! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I actually auditioned for the show twice. The mm. first time I auditioned for the show, I made it past all the rounds, but I wasn't chosen to be flown out to be a part of the select ensemble. She was doing a select ensemble the first time she had auditions. The second time I made it past all the rounds and they flew me out to LA and that basically taught me that I wanted to live in LA. Like from that experience I was like okay LA is where I want to be long term and just the camera and the producers and it was I want to say it was easier for me because I knew myself and if you don't know yourself it's very easy for you to get lost with a lot of production and things that, that you don't really know that goes on behind the scenes but because I would say the dance world and just dealing with a lot of bullying and other stuff growing up prepared me for situations like that so it was easier for me than it was other dancers and other dance moms but I absolutely love the experience, just being in front of the camera, the opportunities that you got. Like I, was, I wasn't even there for that long. I was really there for a couple of days because I wasn't chosen for her um, team that she chose the second time. But I was grateful that I was flown out to LA. But um, just being there for a couple of days, it was like I came back home and there were all of these like, Instagram pages talking about like how she had the finalists flown out and they like knew my name and I'm like how did they figure out this information like what is going on and it just was very a very exciting experience and I'm glad that I had it at such a young age because it pre it shows me what I want to work towards like that's like the goal and once I get there again then I know where to go from there fabulous fabulous so for young people out there especially you know young queer black people um you know what would you like to say to them about you know striving for your dreams you know especially heading into you know careers like this that can be volatile you know artistic careers you know careers within media um what advice would you give there's a lot of different things that I have to say about advice I would give because I just came back from a dance nationals and there was a lot of things that I expected to happen that actually didn't happen for me. And I would say that it is very important to have goals, have things that you are striving for and not only to have big long-term goals, but have small goals leading up to those goals. So that you know, regardless of what happens, if you did or did not achieve that goal, you know that you worked your hardest to get there. And mm -hmm. that's the first thing. The second thing is, I really don't like this saying, but it makes sense. Like you can't have everything. And that is something that I really, I really don't like that saying. Because it's just like, what? Like, I want to have everything. Like, what do you mean I can't have everything? But. I realize that in a sense, you cannot have everything. Like you can be your best version of yourself, actively work towards all of your goals and still like not get everything that you want in life, but you're still striving for them. So I don't want someone to take it as, oh, I'll never get it. So let me not strive for it because you never know what is for you. You don't really know. You can think that it's for you, but then at the end of the day, it might not happen for you. And then something else is for you, but you don't know that yet because you haven't it was in your mind. So 
actively making goals. You can't have everything. And also having a good friend group. I feel like with often times in the gay community, there's a lot of things that are normalized that shouldn't be, especially me being from Atlanta and talking to a lot of my out-of-state friends and the certain stereotypes or the certain things that they perceive it's normal from for me being a black gay male in Atlanta and I'm like no like that's not that's not me that's my what you see on the internet but that's not me at all so having a good friend group is very important if it wasn't for my friend group there's a lot of opportunities that I would not know about and there's a lot of things that there's a lot of goals that I would not even strive for because I didn't know that about myself until I met a certain friend group so I think having a very supportive positive friend group that's always that doesn't limit themselves that's another thing like not limiting yourself always being open to everything that doesn't mean saying yes to everything because that's not what you're supposed to be doing yes it's good but sometimes it's not beneficial in certain situations but having a very open-minded friend group is important having a good friend group setting goals and knowing that not everything is for you or you won't get everything is very very go. important there you go there you go good good words of advice good words of advice to remember so if our viewers want to follow you and keep up with you you know whatever you're doing how can they go ahead and do that they can follow me on instagram at i'm xavier logan you can follow me on youtube at xavier logan you can follow my twitter i am xavier logan basically everything is just my name xavier logan if, i'm pretty sure if you just type it up you'll probably see my content because i try to make sure that it's my name awesome awesome and for the viewers those links will be in the description below xavier thank you so much for you know chatting with me today it's been really really great and it's always amazing to see young people you know just going for their dreams and doing what they need to do especially (laughs) young queer black people i live for it thanks so much it's been really really fabulous thank you thank you and to our viewers thank you for watching. Bye everyone. We thank our production sponsors, Whitman Walker Health, for their continued support of Team Racine Productions. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.